Uh, we've got four so far and they'll just keep on coming. That's for sure, five. That's gonna prepare our live stream and get all that going. Are we calling on someone else's behalf or just calling? Not on... today, no, not okay. today. So we'll be calling yours and I don't know why, but uh, Zoom changed their privacy sharing policy. It's making my life difficult. No, no. So I can't share directly to our Facebook group for agent locator clients anymore. I have to share it to my page and then share it to the group from my page. Oh, <laughs> like wow. it's just like, yeah, like it, it doesn't enough. make any sense. It's like, you don't have permission for this. I'm like, well, what's going to give me permission to do this? <laughs> always changing stuff totally right oh, i'm so tired I hear you on that one i have a dog that was walking around whining all night oh i hate Acting. those oh gosh i'm like just lay down <laughs> just chill out like i need to sleep oh, and i don't know why she's scratching so much because like she has allergies i know but she's been on medication so i don't know what like what is going on what's gone on that she's now the medication doesn't seem to be working so. totally right and that's always in the, like when it comes to pet stuff it's just always so scary sometimes you know <laughs> yeah well and it's like so expensive every time yeah I just give my card to just not like it is what it is i just try not to even look at it anymore <laughs> okay <laughs> not four digits okay thank you so much <laughs> like please <laughs> perfect perfect so we do have a good chunk of individuals in here now um so we can definitely get started in here how's everyone doing today hope everyone's doing well Hope your weather is shifting and you're getting more sun shining wherever you are located. Right. It was a nice day here yesterday. It was almost summer-like weather. So it was a very warm afternoon. So that was nice. nice. And then it got cloudy today because, you know, they like to just tease you for a day. To let I you know. know what the possibilities are. And then it's like, nope, just kidding. Just joke. <laughs> right it's so annoying uh, so it's, it's so annoying it is what it is but there's so many people that i think they're like oh you're gonna wish that it was cooler i was like no i won't i said <laughs> i am like a heat person i love the heat that's i will never complain if it's too hot i will complain if it's too cold but never if it's too hot yeah i know what you're saying i know what you're saying Awesome. We are all streamed and good to go. Laura, I've tried the CBD drops. It didn't really work. She's just like a hot mess is all she is. She's a hot mess that cost me lots of money trying all this stupid stuff. I think it was her food because I had her on one food that was like, uh, it breaks the proteins down into like a super molecular level or something that their body doesn't really process the protein the same way or recognize the protein. And then I switched her back to her other food and she's only been on that for a couple of days, but then I noticed her scratching pick up again, even though she's on the medication. So I think it's her food, but then she also goes in the lake. <laughs> so yeah, so there's so many be, things something from the lake that you know did that so there's just so many different it's just like i wish there was just a crystal ball i could look into and figure out exactly why why she is scratch because i just feel bad for her really at the end of the day like she's totally. scratching like i couldn't imagine being in that the worst see the same predicament as a person right i have my camera working today i was just hiding for a bit yeah no worries no worries it uh yeah, I just couldn't imagine. <laughs> I couldn't imagine what right. it would be like to feel like that constantly it's itchy all the time. Like I know, right? It's brutal. It would be perfect. So let's jump in. So you were so you, you were just discussing before a lot of these people on, you just closed one of your listings that oh. you that you you got. That was an agent locator. Really that was about like eight months to a year in follow-up. Okay. And what happened was this one was actually a good one. Uh, 
called, followed up, had a great conversation with her, do the normal script, everything was fine, kept following up with her. And then she, um, she just never got back to me. I called her like 10, 12 times straight, like, and left voicemail, left voicemail. A lot of people would have stopped at three, right? But mm-hmm. you just keep following up when I, when I, when I get those um, no answers and leave voicemails, but they don't reach out to me, to me, they just don't need my service yet. It's not like mm-hmm. they're saying no to me. Right. Um, so followed up and then ended up getting a listing appointment there. Um, and this was probably like in the beginning of this year. And then what happened was on the day of it, they wanted to cancel my listing appointment because they're like, Nick, you charge like, you know, like too much commission. We want someone that does 1%. So I said, okay, well, you know what? I'm ready to go. Let me just take a look at your home and let me explain a few things. And, you know, if not, then at least you made a friend. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So got my way in, talked to them, you know, did a great job. um, And then they ended up signing with me. So, you know, and I didn't, you know, I did the normal stuff that I do. So nothing crazy at all. Yeah. Perfect. And then how did you address the whole 1% commission? I just let them know, hey, at 1%, at 1%, if they're doing 1%, they're cutting costs somewhere. I'm charging you 5%. This is why is because I'm not, I'm not cutting cost. I'm actually going to be spending market, your money back into your marketing, back into your home, like staging. So, you know, I got the cleaners, the stagers, um, the, you know, professional photos and videos. Um, I got like four, almost 40,000 views in like five days on Facebook, just from that. Right. So good exposure. I have my systems on point. So, I mean, you know, that's my own sauce and recipe. Um, Mm -hmm. But just kind of explain to them and like, listen, like if someone's doing 1%, you know, the thing is, is like, they're cutting it somewhere, either they're not telling you they are, but Mm -hmm. they are. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, too, is if stuff goes down, like you need someone that's not going to run away from your problem, you need someone that's going to, you know, butt it head on. And actually, that one there, we actually had multiple offers on that night, we accepted a firm offer. And then the next day, the deposit didn't bring the deposit. And then they were saying that their buyer was ghosting them. So that's an issue because I can't be released from it. Even though 24 hours is done, it doesn't matter. The contract's still legit. It just means they breached the contract. Mm-hmm. So, you know, luckily my broker of record took care of me and, 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 you know, told me what to do perfectly. So we accept another offer a little bit less, but, you know, nothing too crazy. Um, and then, you know, that's it. So yeah. they were happy, but that's why you hire someone that is actually passionate and cares about what they do, right? Because like these scenarios, you know, come up. And that was my first time dealing with that. I've never had an issue like that in my six years of real estate full time. Someone couldn't get their deposit in time. Did they ever get the buyer that was supposed to buy or did they completely? Yeah, they, we ended up getting a mutual release. Yeah. You know, whatever, whatever story they were selling, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, whatever it is, what it is. Um, yeah. So it's just, it's just crazy that people are just doing this and, it, and it's brutal because it's the agent that's not educating the client. Yeah. You know, because he was like, oh, well, we're done the deal. You can accept another one. I'm like, no, we cannot. (laughs) No. So it's just like, that's the scary part. And like, for me, it just was more of an aha moment because it's like, you know, us agents who are in this call and doing the right things and not taking shortcuts and really helping people, you know, this is people's like goose egg of money. Like, you can't screw this up for people, like just in a humanitarian type of way, like, you know, you, we have, we have an obligation to take care of people. So like, mm-hmm. you know, that's why I'm successful. That's why I'm here. Right. I'm busy. Like, cause I do all like whatever I need to do for my clients. Absolutely. But, but anyways, they saw how I presented. They know I had experience. I showed my past sales and it was it. Good. Awesome. So like, guys, you just got to keep going. Like, I know sometimes it's uncomfortable, but I'm used to the uncomfortableness. That's why I just power through it. You just keep calling people though. That's the thing. You don't give up. Like there's no No. reason to give up calling someone until they basically tell you to F off and don't ever call me again. You just keep calling because again, you you put yourself into their shoes. There could be somebody calling you or agent locator. We keep calling you to come on board and, and get into our services, but you weren't ready and you weren't ready. So eventually you start kind of avoiding some of those calls and avoiding those calls until you're ready and then you start answering or then you start reaching out, right? So it's, it's just natural behavior that we all do it where we just kind of avoid, you know, basically giving someone bad news, right? Saying I'm not ready, um, maybe later down the road, give me a call in six months. That's, that's not good news. That's not positive news we're passing on. So we avoid that the best we can. Exactly. And like, be honest, you gain people's trust. It doesn't matter if they like you or not, but you gain their trust when you're upfront and honest. That's it. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is what it is, but this is what's happening. 
Yeah. Oh, for sure. And people love transparency, so, right? We yeah. Transparency with them and just saying, hey, this is what it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, I'm just going to be honest with you. And totally. then people would rather you be honest and give them bad news than, you know, put some icing in line and, you know, just to get what out, whatever out of someone, regardless if it's real estate or not. Right. So I agree. I agree. Okay. So I, is there any other questions? Just, I guess. No, it doesn't have any or... questions. So those watching, as always, you have the Q and A, you also have the chat. So as we're going along, if you guys have any questions that you wish to ask, by all means, just shoot them in there. We will answer those questions. <clears throat> um, and then Nick's just going to do some calls and then we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, cool. Let me just blur this stuff. Oh, wait, I have to share this. Share screen. Okay. Technical difficulties, you guys. The first one's always the toughest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is going on here. Just keep saying initializing. Crystal, it just keeps saying initializing. Uh, try refreshing. Have you had the CRM open for a little while now as well? No. Oh, you just opened it? Yeah. Sorry, hold on. Let me just try going to the next one, I guess. Let's see if that one does it. If not, it, uh, what I would suggest is going in. You like, log out? Well, you can try logging out, logging back in, or try open, like logging out, opening up an incognito window. There could be something cached. Oh my God, this is so painful for people watching. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's still just initializing? No, it's just like my computer screen is so slow. Like, I don't understand. And well, it's we have fun. this going. We've got a question from Aaron. Um, Aaron just got started with Agent Locator. Uh, does Agent Locator CRM use Twilio to dial the current client directly from the CRM? Will it save record a call for you and what phone number does it appear when it comes from the recipient? So when you are making calls, you are calling through the CRM through Twilio. The number on the leads call display is going to be your Twilio number. If they call back, it gets redirected to your cell phone. So even if you're, you're wherever, you can answer a call at any given time, every call would be logged and recorded. So even if you're on the road and a lead calls you, 
that call is going to be logged and recorded in their account. So you could always go back and listen to it if you have to. Personally, I give my Twilio to everyone because you guys essentially anyone that deals with me has an account and agent locator for the most part. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that all of that is tracked and logged that these communications actually happened. So what does what does the number look like when it comes to your phone? Uh, from Twilio? Yeah. Like it's if the I leads have having... phone number. It's the leads phone number is going to call it come up on your call display. Oh. Yeah. So I'm having issues. It's not literally coming up. Like it just keeps saying initializing. And I've never had this problem at all before. Okay. Did you try closing it and do an uh, incognito window? You're gonna have to open, just open up your browser and incognito. So usually if you right click on the Safari icon on your toolbar at the bottom, Sorry. There should be a Also. Thanks. Yeah. I always access everyone's CRM in that window because yeah, I don't want anything cached because it'll even cache the uh, the hiccups sometimes. Denise is saying that sometimes that initializing happens in her Safari as well, so she switched to Chrome, which Chrome is, it, it tends to work better for the CRM system. I'm not sure why, but it does. Sure. Sorry guys, it doesn't ever take this long. Okay. It's working now. Is it? Right. Yep. Yeah, so that's like tip for all you guys. Just go into the private window if it's giving you trouble. Sometimes that just gives you the uncached version. With the numbers. I'm going to share this. You got to share your sound, bud. Oh, shoot, I can write that in there. Guys. So yeah, what I do is I always label things. That's super important. And then I have people on campaigns. So I'm just going to start putting people there. Okay. Hey, Deanna, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good. This is actually Nick Moretti calling. I was actually calling to reach out to you just to thank you actually for coming onto my website on morettirealestate.com. Yeah, and I just wanted to, uh, you know, reach out and just to make sure you had a great user experience. Were you able to find the homes that you were looking for? Okay, okay. Yeah, there's a few factors when that happened and like the market's shifting a little bit. So, you know, um, it, you know, there's a there's a few things that are happening, but like with the shift, what's happening is for most most houses right now, like uh, a lot of listings right now, they're not getting the huge multiple offers. Some of them are actually not getting offers right now because there's a little bit more supply and the demand is still there, but um, the super, super crazy demand that has been happening since September of last year is starting to dwindle down a little bit. There's still sales that are happening, right? But right now there's a lot of inventory that are, are priced really well. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I can send you the listing on Hannah Drive. Have you seen that one? Okay, nice. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. 
I know what you mean. And now some of them are listing at the higher price and they're sitting. The reason being is because um, most of those, unfortunately, the strategy is to list a little bit lower um, to show tremendous value to bring the buyers in because most buyers that, that come in are doing that. I actually just sold two listings in the last week. Um, you know, they were both sold, you know, 78 to $90,000 over asking, you know, so it's just making sure that you're pricing ahead of the market. Um, for you guys, are you guys just, you know, kind of looking and just to seeing what, what's selling the street or do you guys have plans to maybe moving in, you know, a year or two or something like that? Totally. Nice. What do you do if you don't mind me asking? Nice. Nice. That's actually super cool. Change your life, eh? <laughs> Yeah. 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 So you might as well start doing something of your own. Right. And, and kind of just taking care of that. I totally understand. That's why I'm in real estate. Right. We're just independent contractors. So I totally understand that. I totally understand that. But let me ask you a question, if, if that's OK, Deanna, like if your house did sell, you got your top dollar that you guys were asking for. Like, where would you guys want to go next? OK, like Port Hope Coburg. Nice, nice. Yeah. Nice. Got pause right now. Yeah, which is crazy. And yeah, it's hard being in limbo, right? Because you can't really like do anything <laughs> until the other, like the prerequisite is done. You know what I mean? So I totally understand. It's super crazy, you know? Get it done. No, no. Just sit tight. Nice. Totally, totally. Yeah, totally, right? So if you don't mind me asking, like going on to your next house, because I mean, at the end of the day, you have to find something that's even worth it for you to even do it. You know what I mean? Um, so like, what are you looking for in your next house? Are you looking obviously like a detached three bedroom, three bathroom? And is that like a bungalow two story or something like that? Yeah. Mm, I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Totally. Totally. I, I think what I can do to help you out, because I totally understand you're in your information stage and please don't think that I'm trying to sell you on anything. Like that's not what I do. I just want to make sure that, you know, I give you the right information because there's a lot of um, agents that have different opinions and I've done a lot of transactions. I'm actually 1%, the top 1% in the Durham region. So I know my industry, you know what I mean? I know my market. Um, so what I did want to tell you though, is I do have a program that will really help you out. It's actually called the nosy neighbor program, believe it or not. Cause like we're all nosy neighbors. Um, what I can do is, uh, it's true though, right? All I need is just your address. And then what I can do is I'll put it on that street there. And then I can give you daily or weekly or monthly list, whichever you prefer. Um, and then that way, at least for now, you can at least see what's kind of going on in your neighborhood. And I think the next step after that, when you are more comfortable, um, is for me to come take a quick little tour. I actually have a booklet that I just leave with you. And I just kind of go over what the market is right now, what the comparables, the recent comparables that are selling and, and what what essentially you can expect for your house and if I'm qualified to even do it, you know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of what I what I like to do. And I know you're in the information stage, so I'm not trying to push too much on you at all. I just kind of want to let you know what would be the next step because I think where you're at in the information stage is kind of knowing your equation and to know what I would sell for, what I would buy for, um, and kind of go from there and see if it's even worth it to see if what money is left over, if the house that you can get next is worth it, 
you know, there's a lot of questions that come in play, right? And and I just want to make sure that I'm giving you the right information, you know? So how do you feel about that? Cool, cool. So what's your address? I'll put you on the nosy neighbor for, for now. Perfect, perfect. Um, and I'll keep you in the loop too once that Hannah Drive sells, um, just so I can let you know. And then, you know, if, if it's okay with you, I can follow up with you in a week's time or, or whatnot. And, you know, I'll send you um, also what's available in Port Hope Coburg. Are you considering going even further east out there or north or just those two cities are okay for now? Willing to go right now? Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. So what I'll do is I'll put you on that list there. And then, you know, what was the price range that you probably want to stay in between? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, which is crazy, right? It's absolutely crazy. But... Mm. Is yours some, because I live in Bowmanville too. Uh, I actually live on Liberty and Longsworth, just right there. Um, so, so you know, like I'm assuming yours is probably like a three bedroom, three bathroom. Do you have a finished basement at all? Okay, cool. Um, but there's, you didn't put like a, like, it's just like a partly finished space. There's no like actual bedroom or anything, but I mean, someone could put a bedroom down there or whatever anyways, right? Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Like the utility room essentially. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cause I totally know what you mean. You know what I mean? Uh, like regarding, uh, it's so crazy to see what was happening. Cause a lot of them listed at five, nine, nine, six, nine, nine and sold over eight. Right. Um, but I, but I think what's happening is, you know, the strategy is, um, most people are listening at top, top dollar of where it is like sitting at market value and they do tend, they will sell, but it's just a lot of people are so, um, caught up on like the shiny coin. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the ones that are listed super low that are obviously not going to be in certain people's budget or it'll go over too. Right. So it's just like, just, it's more so on the realtors to educate. Right. And like, that's where it's at. But, you know, what I'll do is I'll put you on this list for now on that on that nosy neighbor and I'll send you some uh, listings in that Port Hope Coburg area. And then, if, like I said, I'll follow up within a week's time. If, if you're interested some more, I, I would love to have the opportunity to come by, you know, meet you, do a quick little tour. And then I can let you know a little bit more of where you would land. And, and that helps you out in your equation, you know. Okay, what is she looking for? Is like something similar to you? Above or in ground, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's like Peterborough area and stuff, right? In Cortha Lakes. Criteria. Totally. Okay. Totally, totally. Now, if you don't mind me asking, how much does she want to spend though? Oh, 
Oh, okay. So yeah, she definitely has the budget. And then she's looking at like one acre at least, kind of something like that. Okay, okay. Totally, totally, totally. I totally understand, you know? So what I'll do is I'll send you two separate lists, if that's okay. I'll send you one for you and then one for the other, for your sister. However, obviously if they're working with an agent, I can't really, you know what I'm saying? But if she's not happy and she wants a second opinion, I mean, I'm more than welcome to help her out on that. But you let me know, okay? She has to find something first. Cause she's not gonna sell, she's not gonna sell and then be in a pinch and then not like your house. Like what's the point? Totally understand. Yeah, because they don't want to miss the timing. But she's like, I need to find something. Because like, even if I had a 90 day closing, it's like, a, it's a risk, right? And no one wants to do all this hard work and like, not get what they want. Because like, it's a waste of time and stress and money. Yeah, totally, totally. 100%. Right. hundred percent, hundred percent. So, okay, cool. I'll do that for you. And you know what, Deanna, thank you so much for just uh, not hanging up on me. I really appreciate having this great conversation. And just so I know, um, you know, cause you do the concrete resurfacing and pool decking, like pool decks and stuff. What's your company name? Just so if I have people that come across it, I can just refer them to you. And rubber stone. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you so much. And then we'll be in contact. Have a great day and stay safe. Okay. Thanks. Bye. So killed it. Yeah. Killed so it. You forgot to share your sound so we couldn't actually hear her talking. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, I'm like, this is a good conversation. We can't even hear the other side of it. Oh. So what we can do actually, Nick, is... I saved it, right? Can I? Can we hear it now? You can hear it, but what, what, what we can do is I can get my team. So if you just even mark the lead or send me, email me what the lead's name is, I can have my team pull that call and then we can even share it in the Facebook group. We'll, we'll bleep out her address and all that stuff. So all of that's that's private but then we can actually share with everyone what that actually that conversation actually sounded like on both sides okay yeah i'm so sorry guys i did it the first time it's just because i logged off i know uh so sorry. Is, that one was a good one <laughs> yeah he's like aaron's saying i guess they all don't go that well off the bat you need to dial a bunch of leads to get some more collaborative ones like this one or is this a typical dialing it is not typical uh, but there are definitely people that are willing to talk. And a lot of it has to do with your approach. hundred percent. But do you see how my approach is super simple, easy, you know, even the way that I was saying that I was calling them, I said it in a way that like, you know, I'm giving them praise. Right. And like, you know, you're just making them calm and you're just trying to answer their question. And I'm trying to just bomb saying like, I'm not looking to sell you. If you know, like that's not what I'm here for. I just want to make sure you have a great user experience. And then that just takes everything off them and then they'll tell you everything. But you have to know your stuff. Like I know my market. So like that's why she gave me a lot more information and she felt comfortable and trusted me already that she was going to probably refer me to her sister who is working with a real estate agent. If you guys didn't hear, I just said I totally understand. I can't send her anything because she is working with an agent, but if she does want a second opinion, if that's what she's kind of disclosing to you, please let me know and you know, I'll tell her to reach out to me. Mhm. Mm you can say that. That's totally cool. I'm not on any things, right? So, sorry, I have to write this note because, like, I have to do this. Yeah, no or else worries. I'm going to forget. And we've got Fiona here. You can write your note. So, Fiona is saying, how do you handle the ones who say, I'm not buying, just looking, and only give you minimal answers? Then they're not they're not ready. Remember, you know, we're, we're qualifying people. So, like, if they're not ready to give you answers, you just put them on a list that's a year plus out, and you just keep following up with them maybe once a month. And just people, see if they're still yeah sorry. and people who are giving minimal answers their their walls their guards are up right now right we get 100%. a lot of calls from all different people they don't know if this is real or not their guards are up or they've got a ton of calls that sort of thing so it's if you're going in more casually it's it's your goal is to bring those walls down the best you can so a lot of people they're not buying we're just browsing awesome were you able to find everything you were looking for on the website what do your future exactly. plans look like? 
You know, if you guys have and, a goal that's what of I was doing moving too. next year, or perhaps a year after, right? It's just bringing that wall down. Um, or if they're just looking, how long have you been looking for? Sometimes, you know, if you ask them how long they've been looking for, and then they tell you, and they say, awesome. So do you guys have a goal then of maybe making a move later this year, or perhaps sometime next year? By then, many of them are a little bit more comfortable that they'll give you more information. So just treat these as conversations rather than, converting i gotta convert i gotta convert i gotta convert yeah don't even worry about that talk to don't even your, worry you know about them. that just talk to you're having conversations with people and take information from that conversation that you can leverage at a later time or even talk about right so if someone's talking to you and they give you information outside of their home search or you i always say you hear the kids in the background you hear the dogs in the whatever talk about that for a second oh what kind of dog you got i love dogs exactly Right. People love talking about their dogs, right? Their walls instantly will just drop. But people right? love so talking now about you're them. Talking. I'll say, okay, back on track here. So anyway, <laughs> right. So it's just kind of like taking a friendly and making making friends really is what you're doing. Um and then let's see what else I got. Sorry, I'm just like right, okay. this one was a good one. So what you guys missed out, sorry, and that's totally my bad. But what you guys missed out is she just um, she just was looking she was looking online at her a neighbor's house that's been on the market for a little bit, and she was just wondering what was happening. Um, so you know I know the market here, so I explained to her what was happening, and then I said, okay, well you know I totally understand that you want to find what you're looking for. So what do you want in your next home? So then she's just talking to me. She's just trying to figure it out. She's like, yeah, I want to move to Port Hope Coburg. I um, want to cash out, get a little bit of money, but my, my son's in school, uh, in high school for one more year. Um, so we're just waiting to wait it out and all that stuff. So what I did is I signed her up on Nosy Neighbor. I told her that I'd call her back next week to do a listing presentation if she's still up to it. Um, I just gave her the soft approach now. And then like once she warms up and she sees my email, she sees things that she's interested in. Hopefully I'll call her, I'll call her on next Friday or whatever, next Wednesday um, and see if she's ready to, for me to come by and just have a quick tour. Maybe she's not, but like, she might not she even answer my timeline, call. timeline, right? But her timeline is, she's got a legit. But look, I got my foot in my door line. now. I've already set the expectation, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's what people don't do. They don't set the expectation. Mm -hmm. But you've got like a firm timeline on her. She, and it's legitimate. I'm just looking because my son has to finish high school. I'm not going to move you know, Port Hope and we live in Bowman, 100%, 100%. Go, you know, in the last year of high school, like that would be, it has to be worth it for her. Right. So it was mm -hmm. me just more so explaining to her what was worth it, you know? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And who knows her kid might be all on board and things change. That's why you follow up. People's plans change. Situations change. hundred percent. I don't know if this, yeah, I don't think this works, but like, you know, these conversations usually like for me, like I only need to call like five or 10 people and I've already talked. I've already probably got two or three new clients, you know? Mm -hmm. So like once you start doing this and like, I've been doing this for like six years. So like, yeah, it better be easy for me right now or else like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, but like, you know, the more that you come through it and like, I really wish I had my friggin' volume on here because it was just such an easy flow conversation. Like she knows me and like, that's where you want to get. Mm -hmm. Her guards it, dropped, right? She yeah. Willing to talk to you. Exactly. Um, and Aaron was saying, "What was that line of yours?" It's the "I'm not calling to sell you. I just want to make sure you're having a good user experience on our website." Yeah. So I just say, "Hey, my Nick." Well, you hear it now, but like, excuse me. Um, I just say, "Hey, my name is Nick Moretti. I just want to reach out um, just to thank you so much for actually coming by my website on MorettiRealEstate.com." The reason why I say so many words and I pause is because it sounds real. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean like I'm calling and I'm letting you know like it sounds like I'm nervous or whatever but whatever yeah. yeah I'm not I'm just trying I've learned doing this approach gets me a little bit more answers well you gotta so face it slow it down I've had a right. guy watch me and listen to me he's like when I first got on phones and he's like slow down you, you're not even giving the person the opportunity to speak slow down Right? It's hard so we, though because you're so scripted. Sometimes, like we know what we're gonna say, and so we just want to say it. Whereas, like, it, it the person can't even comprehend what's going on because it's all coming at them so fast, right? I know, right? So it's just taking it back slow and then slowly talking to them, and yeah, it's it's hard. I totally hear you. <laughs> when you're learning, when you're learning, it's definitely hard. It's like me on my trainings; I go so fast because I forget like 
that no one knows as much as I do for the most right. part. So I'm like, you just go over here and then over here. And they're like, can you slow down? I'm like, yeah, I can slow down. And then I feel like I'm like, am I doing this too slow now? Like, is this a good pace? But it's- That's so uh, funny. Fiona is asking mean. like, you know, typically you're going to follow up with her next week. Um, and you'll keep following up with her until you get her on the phone. But once you get her on the phone again, whether you get into this lady's house or not, just to take a preview and, and kind of look at things, what, what would be your typical follow-up structure for someone so like I'll her? I'll tell you. Yeah, perfect. So I'll call her. So are we going to role play that she's on the phone or she didn't answer? You want me or? No, just in general, like this scenario I'm saying, like, oh. am I, is she answering the phone call or is it that she's not answering the phone call when I do the follow-up call? Either or, but how often would you do it? So if I did the follow-up call, like I told her, I told her I'd call her next week. Yeah, yeah. So I would call her next week. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I'd be putting her on nosy neighbor. I would be putting her on uh, the list and, and putting in what she needed. Yeah. Um, and, and then sending it to her, let her sit on that for seven days. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would call her and I would just say, hey, hey, Crystal, hope you're doing well. You know, I just wanted to connect with you just to see how everything uh, is going. How was your week? You know, I just go mm -hmm. personal first. And then whatever, and then I would just say, okay, perfect. Well, um, you know, I just want to uh, check in with you just to see how you're doing. I'm glad you're doing well. And I also want to make sure that the list of homes I'm sending you is what you're looking for. I know last time we talked, you wanted poor Hope Coburg uh, bungalows um, in this range. You know, I did send that to you. How did you like that? Did you like mm -hmm. it? Did you want me to expand some areas? Did you want, so I'm already building a conversation, right? Yeah. And then um, then I'm going to just essentially say, okay, perfect. I'll, I'll update that criteria for you. Um, and you've been on the nosy neighbor. So that house that you talked about didn't sell as of yet, let's just say, uh, or if it did, it sold for X amount, right? Um, and then I would go into the, the thing is, you know, you know, as we talked last time, you know, I was telling you that uh, I would love to come by and, uh, you know, meet you and just do a quick little tour at your house. And I have a booklet that tells you all the market stats and what the comparables are and what you can look for and expect in your price in today's market. Um, you know, and then I just kind of go from there. When are you available? Like, I don't, like, I don't just like leave it. I just go, when are you available? Are you available later this week or early next week? Mm -hmm. okay. And then if they say no, not ready. Okay, no problem. What I'll do for now is I'll send you on this list. I'll add you onto my newsletter and then um, I'll follow up with you in a, in a couple of weeks. But if mm -hmm. anything reaches out to you or you see a listing that you do like, please let me know. I'd be happy to help you. And I do get people reach out to me yeah. later on. Oh, yeah. If there are a lot of people curious, but I'm locking them the down. Though. Guy, he's like, he's like, I will not move unless I find exactly what I'm looking for beforehand. Totally. It's like, you know, so he's, he's not really motivated, you know, but you never know that perfect property might come across and it's all about the follow-up. It's the perfect timing that you're reaching out to them and being like, Hey, just checking in. Da, 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 right and exactly and it's you know leads are going to act on convenience so if you're checking in frequently on them just to say hello you're being convenient you're going to catch some of them eventually at a time that's just like perfect timing it's i totally like right agree place, right time so like yeah you just got to focus on conversations don't worry about how many deals you're going to do um, and I know that's hard to switch our mindset because if any one of you guys are in a sales background, it's always about the deals, the deals, the deals. Mm -hmm. But what I would focus on more so is the conversations that you're touching base with people every day. So like I try to do 20 people minimum a day. So that means 100 people a week and that means 400 people a month. Out of 400 people a month, I will get deals. Every if 10 conversations you have, you should have at least one appointment of some sort. I agree. I agree. Some sort. Doesn't have to be anything extensive. It could just be an online presentation. But every 10 conversations, you should be able to land at least one, one sort of type and, of appointment. And get into the habit of booking appointments. Because like, I know what it is. You At first, when you're in real estate, you're booking to get your the leads. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then once you get the leads, you're qualifying the leads. Once you qualify the leads, you're now booking for an appointment. So you're trying to get something for their time. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you're showing casing homes. And then after that, you're putting offers in, right? So you have to remember, like. There's all different steps in the process. 100%. If the lead comes in, we're going to show homes tomorrow. It's, you know, it would I be I mean, amazing. it does happen like that. It would be but, amazing. Like, it doesn't happen all the time. It's like one out of a thousand. Yeah, those are unicorns. You got to have a lot of money to have co consistent unicorns. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. But that's, that's more so it. And like nowadays, like uh, for my agent locators, uh, leads that want to go pro see properties, like I, I, I only sign, I sign them on BRAs before I go out. And mm -hmm. I've already signed five or six people. 
So like, just because like out of most people, like I don't want to waste my time. No, no, for sure. What I let uh, people know. How many leads are you, what are you at right now? You're at a thousand leads in your system? 1100 right now. 1100. And then that's this year and last year, right? Cause you started last year. Yeah. Yeah. So I think by, I had 800 or 900 in January. Okay. So then we're at, and that then makes you, sense. And then you did how many deals out of that? Someone's just asking. So last year I did nine, nine, nine or deals, 10. Nine. So that's about, that's, yeah so for if you had 900 leads that's a one percent conversion for every 100 leads you're getting one deal so 400 leads you would have but i have a lot of the pipeline like there's yeah, a lot there's of deals a lot that are not happening pipeline. now but they're so, all going to start popping together. and that's the thing so for everyone that's watching it's not just the leads that you generate today that are are going towards conversion rates so as long as you're consistent in your system and you're following up that one to 2% is com compounding year over year because you're going to get leads today that transact next year that will go on top of your one to 2% next year. All right. So it's always, as long as you have systems and you're, you're, you know, maintaining a good follow-up, then you're going to start to see better results because a lot of people are in that research phase and they're a year, two years. Some, some people you know, they don't even know how far out there because they are not even in any, anywhere near a position to be buying a house, right? So it's just keeping that relationship and that foundation going. And it's really, a, at the end of the day, it's, it's a minimal amount of your time to be following up with people, right? And, I totally agree. And it's like, even if it took a year, a, a lead, two years to transact, if you're doing the, the check in associated with that, you're looking at most like, like 30 hours, minutes, maybe? well, not even 30 minutes to an hour of your time. Well, who cares? Call, call it 10 hours. Call it 10 hours. Highball it. Like, yeah. but it's not even that. It's like an hour of your time. I know. Up and it's like an hour. So people won't do it because they're like, it's a waste of time. So you're like, it's one hour to make $50,000. 10 hours in total, probably. But this is the thing that. though, is a lot of people <laughs> are, are, you know, you have to find what motivates you. Sometimes money is not the main motivator. No. Maybe just seeing the deals is, is it's motivation. The gratitude, so it's like it, the deals, you know? Yeah. People but showing gratitude I, and that is. Yeah. It's, but what I found. What you came into real estate for in the first place. Exactly. What I found, what I found to be successful in these type of leads is building the connection with them early and then still take just touching base. So as long as you're having a good 10 minute conversation with someone, cool. It doesn't matter if it doesn't go anywhere, but put them on your newsletter, put them on, on the nosy neighbor, put them on something that you're always going to be top of mind. Though. Yeah. So when the time does come, you get an email where it's like a reply from, from lead where it's just like, Oh, I, I like this one. And then you're like, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But if you're, yeah. And there are people that, you know, I've had clients. It happens to me all the time. All of a sudden this person out of the, the blue, they've never talked to you is like, Hey, Interesting happens to me all the time purposes. and they're like all the time yeah all the time and it's just because I'm, I'm consistent I another you know a secret that you need to do is you need to get your e-campaigns you need to take the time sit on a computer write your email campaigns out like all the emails that you always write onto your emails like just put them on like just start writing your stuff out and then go drip. to text so you don't yeah it. it just saves you time yeah and people respond to it if you do it right if, yeah, you do it right. Sim short, simple, to the point, and as if you actually wrote the email, not a newsletter style email. Exactly, and that's why I'm saying you have to sit down and write it. And only like, you, you can can't just that. copy and paste it. Yeah, <laughs> it won't work. You can do it, but it won't yeah. work. You got to sound like yourself, right? Um, Julianne's asking, can you go over a scenario if the client is confused by where you're calling from and how to navigate Perfect. that awkward, Perfect. awkward moment? Perfect. So when this happens, like, and usually they're giving you like some sort of attitude, I actually dish it a little bit right back. Okay. Just letting you know. So <laughs> I just go like, if someone's just being like, like, who are you? Right. I'm like, Hey, you know, um, Hey, this is Nick Moretti from Moretti real estate. Just want to thank you so much for coming onto my website. They're like, who, what website? Um, yeah. Well, you were searching on Google. You were probably looking at a home and you looked on my website and you registered your information. And then I get this. Oh, well I had to, okay, so you know who's calling you then, like, you know what I mean, like, you know, and I make them kind of feel stupid, because, like, you know what, at the end of the day, man, like, people knows what it is, like, all I'm doing is just making there sure is you some, find something. 
Some people are very confused though, because again, sometimes you do get leads that have, it's not even the right number, right? And they're like, I don't remember doing that. So you can always also confirm their information. Well, it looks like you were online checking out, you signed up to receive some exactly. other things in the area. Is this, is this your email address? Exactly. And if you're like, no, that's not my email. Okay, well, I apologize. I might have the wrong number then. Totally. Or you haven't been, you're not thinking about making a move. You haven't been looking at listings online. And so sometimes it's like that, but you might end up getting somebody that's, well, I am actually kind of interested in getting this. 100%, job. right? You, you just don't know. know. Right? You have to ask the questions. Yeah. Don't a assume. A lot of people will. They'll just be like, who is this what? And then you can say, well, it's, it's Crystal. You're on site, you know, looking at listings in Bowmanville. Totally. Right. And if they ever say to you, like, oh, I didn't give you consent. Well, actually, because I've had actually a few people that did. Um, and I just said, actually, you did. Like, when you sign in, you check the box for me to follow up with you. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You don't have to say all this craziness. No. Just, like, simple. No, so dumb it down. Did. Yeah, I know. So people, people are, don't care, you know? Yeah. And people well, will feel under attack when that happens. It has a disclosure on there now for all of you guys that's vis visible that says, by signing up, I agree to be contacted by phone and or like there's a whole little spiel. For um, sure. Basically, sure. that they're agreeing to. So, like, it's all within your rights to be reaching out to these people. And the best part, sorry, Chris, I don't mean to interrupt you, but the best part is that once they sign up on one or two or three, they're not going to sign up on any more. So, you better make sure you're that one agent that call, contacts mm -hmm. them because they're not. I, I know they're not. Yeah. And that, and then when you get to my level, you're just picking up everybody. Mm. You first. Um, I've got a question. So Fiona is saying, I had a guy who called, but wanted to try listing privately first. How long do I give him before I call him back? I've called him once already. Um, so I would just keep following up every week and I would say, okay, well, how many showings are you getting? You have to be a professional. Don't be scared. Don't mm -hmm. be scared to ask for the sale. So you would just have to say, Hey, Hey, Crystal, you know, um, you know, I appreciate that, you know, on our last call, you took the time and you were letting me know your, your real estate update. Um, I know that you guys were trying to uh, private sale it. How is that going? Have you put it on the market yet? They Try say no. See if you can bring buyers. I've got buyers. Well, they're looking. Will you be sure. willing to offer commission if I bring a buyer to purchase your private sale? That way I can work out a deal where I'm actually, you know, you know, the, the middle guy in between both of you is for the most part to make sure that there's a fair deal and no one's gonna you're not gonna get screwed over because I know what I'm doing and you don't. <laughs> so. Totally. The approach that I would have went is you can do it that way. The approach I would go on on something like that is just a little different. I would just say, hey, you know, how is it going? Are you on time? Did you list it yet? Right? Because if they're getting delayed, then that means they have a time management problem. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, I understand life gets busy, but when you involve someone else, you kind of like are forced to do these things, you know? So I would ask him, okay, cool. It is on the market. Okay. Awesome. How many showings have you gotten? Right. Mm -hmm. You know? And then I would also tell him too, like, Hey, you know what? It's actually in your best interest to go on a, the MLS market. And I'll tell you why. Um, the reason being is because instead of having 10 or 20% of buyers looking for it, you now have a whole hundred percent of buyers that are looking for your type of homes, right? So what is obviously going to do better? Something that only has 20% of, of vision or something that has a hundred percent of vision, Especially obviously the hundred percent, right? Exactly. Well, right. You're not and let me tell you all the agents like you guys jumping in line to show this home. If they're not, there's nothing on the table for them to do that. They're not going to present it to their client and say, Hey. By the way, 100%. you have to pay the commission on this because this guy's not willing to do it. It's not going to happen. Totally. And you have to, you have to talk out loud the whole scenario. That's what I do. Well, I mean, you know what, if I was in your shoes, you know, I could, I would try to do it myself, but you know what, there's so much that goes involved. And like, if I don't know contracts, like it's just another pain. What I would also advise them to is I would just say, well, like you can also call my move realty or all those realties that are just a mirror post that post your listing. But let me tell you something, us realtors book your showings. And we know that with a for sale by owner, most of them are kind of crazy. And they don't really know the contract. They don't really know. And sometimes they're really off the price, right? So let me save you all that stuff. Because at the end of the day, if you offer less than 2.5% commission, you're not going to get buyers going through or as much as you would get. And my question to you is, you want top dollar, correct? Right. So you doing this strategy is the question you have to ask yourself is how much money am I leaving on the table for the next buyer? Mm -hmm. Done. I get yeah, that appointment right now. 
Yeah, if they can negotiate for themselves, right? then- Oh, I can do a 1% agent. You could do a 1% agent, but let me tell you something. They're not gonna get you top dollar because at the end of the day, they have to market their property. They have brokerage fees and they have taxes and they have also have to eat. So at the end of the day, where are they gonna cut expenses? Where are you gonna cut? You need someone like myself who is gonna spend money back into your listing to market it, to get you top dollar. So you leave nothing on the table and you take everything. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to sign it. Let's go. You know, but like you have to like, I like, uh, you know, I don't know if any of you guys are getting amped on the other side, but like I'm getting amped because I'm like, okay, let's go. Right. And like, <laughs> that's what sellers want to see. Yeah. Cause and I've already done like seven like listings already this for year. for them, right. Working for them. Exactly. And you, with listings, you have to take the, with buyers, buyers are telling you what to do. Okay. When you're a buyer's agent, sometimes, unless you really know your client, then you know what they're looking for. And then you're, you're assessing them. Right. But with listings, you need to take initiative and you have to go the extra step. If you don't, you're not going to be a great, like, I mean, you'll do well, but you're not going to be a, like a really good listing agent. And you'll, you'll always have some people on there. I'm like, I'm not the best. I probably leave some on the table too, like in terms of listing opportunities, but you can't get them all. You do whatever you can. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it is just asking if Facebook ads are more effective or Google ads. They work. They're both. Anything works, there's man. Two, it's just there's, like yeah, you can get everything. The difference between Facebook and Google. So Facebook, you're choosing an audience to put it in front of. People don't go on Facebook looking for real estate. Let's put it that way. They didn't go in there with that mindset. I'm going to go on Facebook and shop for homes right now. That's exactly what they do. Whereas on Google, they're going on there specifically searching for real estate. Now, there's two sides of it because it is always going to be quantity over quality when you're doing lead generation, 100% hands down. So Facebook, not always, but you know, a good time. You, you can get better bang for your bucks. You can get more leads than you would on Facebook, on, on Google. But again, the, the audience is a little different because you're just putting it in front of them. They're not actually searching. So you got to be really careful with your ad offerings to make sure that you're not bait and hooking people and you're giving legitimate scenarios that people would be potentially looking for or your best way of generating good business on Facebook is if you do have an actual listing and people are filling out a form to get information about that listing. People that do that are generally that much closer to making a move because someone that's just tire kicking isn't gonna request information from an agent. Most of the totally. time, some people will, but you know, the average person isn't gonna waste anyone's time doing that because they're not moving. I agree. So it's, totally it really it. comes down, but, like Google's more targeted. So you get people that are actually searching for what you're offering. Whereas Facebook, you're just putting it for them. I would put it like this. Facebook is like open houses. So that's just low hanging fruit. So there's going to be some people that are available, but most people are going to be working with realtors. And unless like Crystal was saying, you're targeting it correctly. and you're, you, But like that requires trial and error. And you have to like spend money to figure that out. Right. So it is what it is. Yeah, first. But that's essentially it. Just don't be scared. Ask the questions, practice your scripts, like practice your scripts before you go on the phone. Yeah. Like don't just go on the phone and let your first three calls be your practice. Because, well, you like, can. You got to, well, I mean, you can, but like. Hey, you're better off not. calling them and screwing that call up than not calling them at all. Yeah, I guess right? so. But like, yeah. if but you, know what you, you practice say. 15 minutes before, yeah. Yeah. you'd be good. That's all I'm saying. 10 minutes, 15 yeah. minutes, just, just repeating, Hey, you know, knowing your opening script and your beginning questions. That's all you got to know. Because and you, you can listen like, to the live dial recordings, you know, the first 100%. opening again and again and again. And you're like, okay, now it's imprinted in my head. And so now I'm just going to regurgitate everything I just heard. <laughs> right? 100%. So it makes 100%. it a lot easier for sure when you're, when you're just mimicking somebody and, and repeating, repeat after me, that sort of thing. So it's uh, definitely worthwhile. And as I said, it's always better you know, if you want to practice to perfect what you're going to say, you'll never perfect it until you've done it for a long 100%, time and you've 100%. called a lot of people, but even then you'll still keep tweaking what you say to people because you'll learn what's most effective and how your delivery goes. Everyone's going to be different, right? So do it a hundred percent. You have to, you have to speak in a way that's comfortable to you. Exactly. And speak your language, not anybody else's language. Absolutely. Well, we only got the one call, but it was a good call, but we didn't get to hear it. So I know I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just send me that. And then I'll have the, the girls uh, 
do that for us and uh we can get so i can just download the file and send it to you right yeah you can download the file send it to me or just send me the lead's name and we can do all that and then either way it works and then we will you know and then we can also bleep out that address that she provides as well and um and then we can share it in the facebook group for everyone so that they can listen perfect. to the conversation yeah perfect awesome. well i hope everyone has a great day thanks for tuning in thank you my pleasure. Bye, guys. Have a great afternoon, guys. You too. Bye.